Yeah. Yeah, hello. Yes. Yeah, good morning all. Yeah, good morning all. Yeah, welcome to the lecture series on cloud and precipitation um, uh, organized by IITM. It's a part of Azadika Amrit Mahotsav series. So it is my great pleasure and honor to welcome Professor Sanjay Sharma, who, who is my guide and mentor uh, from Kohima Science College for today's talk. Um, yeah, uh, regarding sir, uh, he is actually um, uh, involved with research and teaching uh, uh, at the undergraduate and postgraduate levels in uh, Department of Physics, Kohima Science College. It is in Nagaland, in the northeastern part of India. Uh, his research includes the study of regional variation of morphological and microphysical properties of precipitating system, then thunderclouds, electrification. And uh, he, he, he's, a, he's a member of uh, International Center for uh, Theoretical Physics, ASICTP, Trist uh, in Italy. Then he also got the ATCOS Research Fellowship from ISRO. And recently, he got the, um, gov uh, the governor's award for meritorious service to uh, from government of Nagaland. Uh, I actually joined uh, uh, my sir in 2002. We start uh, he started from a small room and laboratory. Now it is becoming expanding and expanding the. Uh, um, uh, not only Nagaland, but also some eastern part of India. Sir, I welcome you, sir, for today's talk. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mohan. It is my privilege to be here for this talk, today's talk. And uh, I will start now. And for any discussion, I will be taking the questions also. So, OK, I will start. So my talk. Uh, my title of the presentation is Morph Morphological and Microphysical Properties of Monsoon Precipitation System over the Northeastern and Eastern part of India. Outline of of raindrop formation, then raindrop size distribution and its modeling. Then we will discuss about the rain DSD measuring systems and I will present some results uh, regarding regional and seasonal variation of rainfall, morphological and microphysical features of precipitating systems over the northeastern and eastern part of India, and then vertical evolution of rain DSDs and associate my, associated microphysical processes, and finally summary and conclusion. Rain microphysics. The rain microphysics depends upon the morphology and geographical location of the clouds. The knowledge of morphological and microphysical properties of precipitating systems provide a better understanding of the interaction of large scale system with the involved microphysical processes. The knowledge of drop size distribution is key to understand the microphysical properties and processes within a precipitating systems. The knowledge of rain microphysics has wide applications, such as in radio communication, quantitative precipitation estimation, soil erosion, understanding the severe weather phenomena, parameterization of cloud and rain microphysics, in numerical weather prediction model, and many more. Now to begin with, first let's understand the typical size of cloud and raindrops. So it whole process is to start with the condensation nuclei, which is in the approximate range of around 0 0.1 micron. And its velocity is very, very less. It is a more or less a floating level uh, nuclei. And then typical cloud droplet, it is around 10 micro, 10 micron radius. Then large cloud drops, it comes out around 50 microns. And borderline between cloud drop and raindrop is around 100 microns. It acquire a velocity around 70 centimeter per second. And then typical raindrop drops start from one micron. And its velocity is around 650 centimeter per second. So this is a typical size of this. 
uh, raindrops, the cloud and raindrops. Now, formation of cloud droplets. So the first initiating point here is the critical size of the droplets. The process by which water droplets form on a condensation nuclei from the vapor phase is called a heterogeneous nucleation. So once heterogeneous nucleation take place, then for a droplet to be stable, which form by a chance collision among water molecules, it must grow to a radius larger than a critical size. RC. The critical size RC is defined as the radius for which actual ambient vapor pressure is equal to saturated vapor pressure over the surface of a spherical drop, droplet. And E is equal to yes, exponential to sigma RC, RV, QL, T. Here they have their usual meaning, uh, sigma and QL are surface tension and density of droplet of radius R at temperature T. RV is gas constant for water vapor. And with this, if we simplify it, uh, the size or radius of a critical size formulation comes out like this. It is a, uh, where S is a saturation ratio. Now, We'll just take an example to get the feel of uh, uh, critical size of a, a droplet. Now, for example, uh, if you see the formula here, S is this uh, saturation. So if saturation is 1.01, .01, it means a super saturation of one degree. At zero degree centigrade, uh, centigrade for pure water, if you put the value of surface tension, gas constant, and uh, uh, other parameters, temperature at zero degree centigrade, the size radius of critical size comes out 0 0.1208 micrometer. It means it suggests that droplet with a radius below 0 0.1208 micrometer will be unstable and will tend to evaporate. So size has to, for this given values, for this super saturation of one degree centigrade at zero degree centigrade for water, droplet has to reach this size, then only it will be stable. Another super saturation, if we increase the super saturation by 1.10, super saturation of 10 degree, in that case, RC value come out 0 0.01261 micrometer. It suggests that if supersaturation is more, the critical size we will get the lower. It means at a lower droplet size will be quite stable to sustain it for the further growth of the uh, droplets. Now, once it has attained the critical size, now growth takes place by diffusion condensation process. So here, this is the equation of a, a growth of the water droplet with respect to time. This, uh, it is a famous equation. It has been derived by using the diffusion equation for the steady state here. And, uh, this one, it is a function of uh, saturation and thermodynamic term associated with the heat conduction. And uh, it is a vapor diffusion term, Ft. So it is a function of this one. Uh, again, it, we can see it is a function of latent heat, gas uh, constant, temperature, uh, diffusion constant, etc. So once uh, it uh, droplet growth by diffusion condensation process, then initiation of rain in non-freezing clouds, we will discuss it here. So that is the setting the stage for the coalescence process. So in this, we are not discussing about the cold cloud of freezing. We are non-freezing clouds uh, I'm taking into account. So here it is generally agreed that collision and coalescence of droplets become effective when some of the droplets grow to a radius of about 20 micrometer. So once after critical level uh, radius it has attained, after that again it has to grow up to that around 20 micrometer. And uh, when some droplets reach a radius of around, radius of around 30 micrometer in the developing cloud, 
Coalescence is likely to be the dominant growth process. Broadening of the droplet spectrum toward the larger size greatly increase the chance of coalescence once a size approaching 20 micrometer is chased. Now further we will discuss the growth of the drop by collision coalescence process is governed by the collection efficiency. Collection efficiency is defined as a, it is a function of collision efficiency and coalescence efficiency. The ratio of the actual number of collision to the number for complete geometric sweep out is called the collision efficiency. And the ratio of number of collisions to the number of collision is called the collisions efficiency. A typical raindrop of 1 mm diameter may be result of the order of 10, 10 to power 5 collisions uh, to come to this size. Now we will discuss once uh, uh, raindrops are formed. Now to study these rain uh, drops or so properties of rain drop, rain DST, rain drop size distribution is an important parameter. So in this section, we will discuss about the rain DST and its modeling. So here the first parameter which is start uh, to study the DST parameters are the number density. And number density, it is a function of number of drops uh, which have been collected by the sensor, or which has been detected by the sensor. And it is uh, divided in which that observation has been taken. And B is the uh, terminal velocity of the raindrop for a, uh, for a given diameter. And delta D is the increment range of the drop diameter. And the terminal velocity of raindrop is given by this formulation. It is a, a famous uh, formula by Gunn and Kinger. And it is a, a very important uh, formulation or expression which we use for the study of raindrop size distribution. Because eventually we will see that velocity and diameter, uh, they are interrelated. Diameter of the raindrop and velocity, terminal velocity is uh, interrelated. And this has been used in radar remote sensing also this formula. We will see in coming slides. And uh, the, to begin with DSD, study of DSD, we defined by the DSD moments. The formulation is equal to di to power n and n d number density and uh, uh, range or uh, interval for the drop diameter. And out of this, if for different different value of n, uh, we get different different rain integral parameters. So for n is equal to six, uh, if we put it, then DSD moment is known as the radar reflectivity factor. And uh, in particular unit of millimeter to power six meter cube, our expressions come out as such, uh, pi by six, one into 32. Here, range of channel uh, I have taken uh, by virtue of uh, Parseval distrometer. Of course, if we take, uh, Joss Wald Vogel distrometer at that time there are 20 channels are there. So this uh, formulation has been written, take into account the observation from uh, OTT Parseval distrometer. Similarly, the third moment uh, also we can write the expression for rain intensity and uh, liquid water content. So once uh, from the DST we are able to uh, get the different moments of DST, we can utilize it uh, for different, different applications. Uh, radar reflectivity factor is very much used in radar metrology. By using very famous JADAR relation, we can, once we know the Z value, we can calculate the uh, intensity from radar. So it has uh, uh, various applications, these integral parameters. Now another uh, uh, parameter is uh, mass weighted mean diameter. So this one is the uh, 
uh, mass weighted mean diameter it means if for a given value of dm it means 50% of the collected mass is below dm and 50% of the mass is above this given value of dm and uh, normalized intercept parameter is also a very important parameter uh, it is very much equivalent to uh, n not parameter which we use in the uh, even in uh, exponential model also so it is a basically it indicate the number density uh, in the lower most channel or lower most uh, size of the observed uh, data and uh, when we say normalize intercept parameter, it means we are normalizing it with respect to the LWC. It means uh, uh, normalize intercept parameter is independent of the rain intensity. So for any given rain intensity, uh, we will get the we will we can compare uh, the NW over dif for different different events or even for different different location also. So it uh, provide a platform where we can compare the value of the N parameter, in, uh, normal intercept parameter at different location and at different rain intensity. Now, once we know about uh, uh, rain integral parameters, uh, after that, another important aspect comes the gamma uh, rain DSD model. So we have different different uh, rain DSD model. Uh, for example, very pioneer work uh, there, exponential model was proposed. And uh, then uh, some authors, some researchers, they pro uh, proposed the gamma distribution, uh, log normal distribution. and uh, gamma distribution also. So in the present uh, situation, current scenario, uh, it is found that uh, gamma distribution, gamma rain DSD model is very much appropriate to parameterize the uh, rain DSD. In fact, uh, gamma rain DSD model is presently used in all numerical weather prediction models to for DSD parameterization. Even in a GPM uh, rain DSD model, uh, they have considered the rain DSD model. Of course, there it is a uh, normalized rain DSD model, but basic is the gamma DSD model is being utilized. So due to that fact, uh, I am just uh, considering here gamma rain model. And it is given by n naught d to power mu exponential minus lambda by t. So here, mu, lambda, and n naught are the shape, slope, and intercept parameter. So shape, when we uh, visualize it, it gives a very important information about the uh, microphysical process or the characteristic of the rain DST. The shape usually varies from minus to plus. So under a general condition, people take it, uh, the extreme value, it varies from minus four to 20, plus 20 mm minus one, millimeter minus one, power one. And, uh, this value of plus and uh, minus, it gives some sense of what type of physical process is taking place. So for example, if we say it is a uh, positive, mu is positive, in that case, it will indicate the positive, uh, uh, it will indicate the positive or upward concave shape of the DST portal. And it, if it is an upward uh, shape, it indicates that the middle range drops are more or dominating in the DSD spectrum. And if it is a negative, in that case, it will be the positive concave uh, shape of the DSD, which will indicate that middle drops are less and 
higher drops and lower drops are dominant in there. So it give a very of the raindrop size shape as well as what type of process is taking place. So it is a very important parameter. And then we come about the slope parameter also. Slope also gives uh, very much idea about the type of uh, or nature of the DSD spectrum. For if we say it is a lower slope, in that case, uh, we understand that uh, uh, larger drops are dominant in that spectrum. So due to that, slope uh, reduce. And if slope is high, in that case, we understand that the larger drops are absent or very much uh, insignificant in that. And uh, and not normalized, or it is not normalized. It is a intercept parameter. It gives about the idea about the number of drops in the lower channels. And these are the formulations. And these formulations are based on the moments. Uh, for example, G, we use the fourth moment, uh, third moment, and sixth moment. And once from G value we get it, we can get the mu. And from mu, then eventually we get all the other remaining parameter, and zero as well as lambda. Now another, uh, it is extended version of uh, normal gamma rain DST model. So it is a modified gamma rain model or normalized gamma rain model. As I told you that this formulation is uh, very much uh, used in GPM uh, cal uh, calculation of uh, DST and uh, even NWP also, and it provides the opportunity that uh, uh, it is uh, irrespective of rainfall intensity and averaging of the rain DST, we can compare uh, the rain DST at different different location and for different different uh, events. So here also we can calculate uh, uh, DM first by using the fourth moment divided by the third moment. And with the help of that, uh, with LWC, liquid water content, and DM, which we have shown here, and the density of uh, water, we can calculate the NW. And then eventually, with the help of uh, sigma M, which is the standard deviation of the uh, uh, raindrop uh, size here, uh, we can calculate. Uh, the mu value also. And once mu value is there, F u mu, it can be calculated by this formula. So basically, we have to calculate uh, in this uh, gamma rain DSD model, basically, we have to calculate mu uh, and w and d. So from there, we can calculate that. So once we are familiar with the rain integral parameters, uh, of uh, different different moments uh, of uh, uh, rain DSD and its model, uh, then we will come to the measurement here. So as far as measurement of uh, rain DSD is concerned, it has a long history. Uh, it is started in 1892 by Anderson, Lloyd J. Anderson, by stain method. So on a paper, uh, it was allowed to fall on a rain, uh, open rain, and then immediately it was brought, and from there uh, it was calculated. So we can see it is long back in 1892, people started taking the measurement of uh, uh, rain DST. So gradually, then in 1904, Wilson Bentley uh, took the floor pellet method, a floor, it was taken out to the outside and once drop fall, and then it was allowed to dry up uh, that floor and that pellets were taken out and then it was measured. So it was a very primitive technique. And uh, in fact, it uh, gave the sense of uh, the what is the approximate uh, 
distribution of raindrop size. So gradually at present, uh, we have a number of uh, instruments by which we measure the DSD. And uh, for example, the most uh, common or most um, uh, widely used uh, is Joss Waldwoser distrometer. It is a impact type. It's here. The measurement is based on the momentum conversion to the electrical signal. So once drop fall on the diaphragm here, mechanical impact due to the mechanical impact that momentum is converted to the electrical signal. And for accordingly for different different channels, these signals are assigned and uh, these electrical signals are eventually converted to the size. Another, uh, these are the in-situ measurements. Another nowadays, uh, 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 people we are uh, using OTT possible distrometer. Uh, it is a particle velocity, particle size and velocity distrometer. And uh, it is based on the extinction process. It means here laser beam is there. And over that, whenever there is a uh, obstruction by the raindrops, corresponding signals are created. And due to that here, we can measure both uh, size as well as velocity of the raindrops. Then uh, very advanced uh, uh, distrometer is also available, which is uh, uh, based on the imaging technique. It is 2D video distrometer, two-dimensional video distrometer. So here, images of falling raindrops are taken, and uh, it provides... Uh, uh, many other parameter in addition to size and velocity, it provide uh, one very important uh, parameter that is the shape. So with the help of uh, two dimensional video distrometer, uh, we can get the shape also, uh, whether it is oblate or it is a spherical. And once uh, this shape information is there, in that case, we can uh, uh, calculate all the uh, polarimetric variables out, uh, from these measurements. And these measurements are very much helpful for the developing a rain retrieval algorithm from the polarimetric radar. So uh, unlike uh, 2D video distrometer, Parcival and Joss Waldwoser, they don't provide the shape parameter. They assume it uh, uh, spherical drops only. So it is an advanced version of, it is an in-situ measurement. And apart from this uh, in-situ measurement, uh, we have remote sensing measurement also. So at, nowadays, uh, micro -rad rain radar is widely used. It is at K-band, which is based on a Doppler shift. So here it gives, uh, moreover, it gives the vertical profile of the rain GST also. I will be discussing in detail. Uh, in the next slides. And another remote sensing technique uh, is uh, uh, from the GPM, dual precipitation radar, by using KU and K band radars by reflectivity and attenuation. We measure the uh, uh, height profile of the rain DSD. Now, these uh, different, different systems, they have their uh, strength and weakness also. Now, for example, uh, this uh, in situ measurement, they provide the observation on the surface. Uh, remote sensing, uh, uh, like from MRR, it provide uh, the vertical profile, but over a point observation, over a fixed point only. But when we but it, they provide a continuous observation. This is their strength. Uh, but once we come to the satellite observation of uh, rain DSD measurement, uh, it though it provides a snapshot of a system over a given point, but it has the advantage that it has the global coverage. And global coverage uh, over that, it takes the measurement over the ocean also which is very difficult uh, by the normal in-situ measurement and over some inaccessible 
terrain also. So it is a combination of their own strength and weakness. So always it is suggested to use integrated approach, uh, remote sensing and in-situ measurement for the better understanding of the rain DST process. So in this uh, presentation, actually we have utilized the observation from uh, uh, Parsival distrometer as well as MRR. So I'm taking the liberty to discuss uh, a bit detail about the uh, uh, possible distrometer. It is uh, a laser distrometer for measurement of the precipitation types, and it kept, it measures both size and speed. And uh, its range is uh, 0 0.2 to 25 mm it can measure. But when we go for uh, 25 measurement, basically it, uh, it is for the hail detection. And rainfall, it will be, raindrops will be around five to six mm maximum. And uh, beam size is 180 into 30 centimeter, which we can see in the uh, site uh, uh, figure here. And measurement of raindrop size, it is based on the obstruction. So if there are no particle in the laser beam, the output voltage of the receiver is maximum. Raindrops passing through the laser beam block off a portion of the beam corresponding to their diameter, thus reducing the output voltage. This determines the particle size. So it is based on the extension concept. So voltage reduced accordingly, size is measured. And measurement of particle speed is to determine the, the duration of the signal is measured. A signal begins as soon as the raindrop enters the laser strip and end when it has completely left the laser strip. So with this duration, uh, we can calculate the particle speed. So OTT possible, as we discussed, I talk that it provides both size as well as speed. Next uh, is uh, the uh, micro rain radar measurement. It is a K-band vertically pointing uh, FMCW Doppler radar manufactured by Mitech, Germany. And it measures the vertical profile of precipitation, particle size distribution, and structure. And it can detect a raindrop with a diameter between 0 0.246 to 5.03 mm. And the effect of, because it is a K band, uh, it is basically scattering is dominated or the my scattering is dominant here. So the effect of my scattering, microwave attenuation, flattening of large raindrops and variation in the terminal fall velocity of the raindrop with height are considered in the operational algorithm of the MRR. However, this is very important point uh, to highlight and we have to a bit cautious while using the MRR also, that the influence of vertical wind and turbulence conditions are neglected, which are not considered here in the correction by for due to vertical wind, uh, which may cause some error in individual DST and corresponding rain parameters. So it is generally and. Uh, uh, clear or it is generally understood that uh, whenever it is a convective, highly convective situation, at that time observations uh, uh, from the MR site, we can have a different type of structure. The first figure, it is a reflectivity profile here, and it gives the idea about the bright band, uh, bright band structure where we get a melting layer at around 3.5 kilometer and lower one is a no bright band ray so here we get we are getting the echoes up to four kilometer uh, so if it is a high rain the echoes from the high altitude will be attenuated Now it has a, it's a, uh, uh, a algorithm for the derivation of rain DST by MRR. 
So it will be quite uh, useful to understand the basic concept uh, uh, behind the derivation of RAIN DST by MRR. The basic parameter which is uh, useful to start the whole process of measuring the RAIN DST is the Doppler shift. So once we, which MRR provide, so due to the relative motion uh, of uh, the fall velocity or radial velocity of the uh, falling raindrops, uh, it calculate or it observe the Doppler shift. So once uh, this parameter is with us, then we can start proceeding towards proceed to calculate the DSD. So with the help of Doppler shift, we can calculate the Doppler velocity. There's a expression is here, Doppler shift multiplied by the wavelength of the radar. Here it is a 24.4 gigahertz K band. So if we multiply half of the wavelength with the Doppler shift, we get the Doppler velocity. And once we have a Doppler velocity with us, then by using the Gunn-Kinzer formula, which earlier also we discussed, uh, we can get the idea about the drop diameter. So as uh, equation two, here we can see it is relating fall velocity, terminal velocity of the raindrop with the diameter. So once, uh, and here correction of the density correction at a different height is This Gunn-Kinzer formula is valid uh, for the drops between 0 0.109 to 6 millimeter. And uh, now, now the next is that if we have uh, velocity with us, we can differentiate it with respect to diameter. So equation two, if we differentiate with respect to diameter, we get the following expression. Uh, new students, they can do this exercise, just very simple exercise, just differentiation. And uh, we get the expression of 6.18 exponential minus 0 0.60. And delta V is the correction factor. By using the given formula, we can apply at a different, different height, this correction factor. And now next is uh, once we have a velocity spectrum, of uh, uh, MRR, which we got from the Doppler shift, then this velocity spectrum, we can convert into the uh, size spectrum. And uh, this one here, the basic parameter, which is we use, utilize it for this conversion, that is uh, our dV by dt. And here it is a reflectivity parameters we are using. So by, if you see the equation four, it is the basic parameter measured by radar is reflectivity eta VH, that is a velocity, which we get uh, eventually with the help of a Doppler shift. And uh, is the spectral reflectivity density with respect to velocity. And from this, we convert it to the spectral reflectivity density with respect to drop diameter. By the given. So it is a simple calculation. Uh, I strongly advise to the uh, new research scholar, they just manually they should try uh, with some case, uh, with some simple examples to calculate this one. And once uh, we have uh, 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 reflectivity, uh, uh, spectral reflectivity density, then we have. Uh, uh, we can get uh, extend this for equation number four and three by using th four and three, we get the equation five. And once we have reflectivity available with us, then we can calculate the number density by using reflectivity spectral density divided by the uh, single particle backscattering cross section. So this is a uh, standard formula is there, but here, it is backscattering constant is using, is done, calculated by computing or by using the my scattering theory. So that care we have to take into account. So with this formulation, we can calculate or MRR give the number density.
Now, uh, after going through these basics of uh, uh, formation of raindrops, then raindrop size distribution, and then how we measure it, now we will start uh, seeing some observation. I will present some observations. Uh, initially, I will start with the regional variation of rainfall and morphological feature of the precipitating systems over the region. As uh, at the very beginning of the talk, I told that microphysics is very much uh, dependent on the uh, morphology of the clouds or precipitating system, as well as on the geolocation or geographical location of the precipitating system. Now to highlight that issue, I, I will be presenting some results here, which uh, already has been published. As uh, I will be showing here, uh, our, uh, these uh, results over the mm -hmm. northeastern or eastern part of India, it has a very complex topography. We can see it. it uh, this region, it consists of a terrain from mean sea level to the, uh, up to the 6,000 meter uh, of height, which consists of uh, Himalaya in the north, and in the eastern side, it has a Patkai Hill Range where Kohima is situated. Our uh, station, one of the station here, it is a Patkai Hill Range. Adjacent to this is the west side is Meghalaya Plateau, east side is uh, Myanmar Plain, and again near it is Bangladesh and West Bengal. So this is our study region, and uh, below south side is the Bay of Bengal. Now over this region, uh, I would like to take opportunity to present some result regarding uh, our from satellite observation. It is a uh, very much clear hydrometeorological hazards in the region. It suffered due to the floods, landslides, uh, lightning. As per the NCB report, report during 2010-19, out of the total 26,924 fatalities due to lightning in India, the eastern and northeastern state of India contribute 50% of the total fatalities. Then flood also create a havoc in the valley region and landslide create a huge loss of life and property in the hilly region. So it is a whole uh, gamut of uh, uh, hydrometeorological hazard by which a northeastern or eastern region is affected. Now, to at the outset, first uh, I will show the rainfall characteristic. It is observed from the TRMM between 1998 to 2020. Climatology it is given here, and uh, it is during pre monsoon rainfall and monsoon. Uh, of course, in this region, we get significant amount uh, amount of pre-monsoon rainfall. That is a something very uh, interesting fact about uh, the whole diversity of the rainfall pattern in India. So, eastern and northeastern has significant uh, rainfall, and uh, during monsoon also it get a. Uh, uh, Good on an average uh, in eastern, northeastern part, 200 mm of rainfall we get it. So here, if we see the spatial variation of uh, rainfall characteristic, so rainfall is more towards the uh, northeastern side uh, of the or eastern side of the study region. Towards the eastern India, rainfall is relatively less. So this is as far as rainfall is concerned. But when we come regarding the morphological and lightning, then situation is reverse. So rainfall is more on the eastern northeast part of India compared to the eastern India. And uh, now if we see the morphological feature, morphological feature in terms of a 20 dpz ecotope height, which we have derived or taken from the TRMM, so it, ETS 20 dBz, it gives the sense of a precipitation height because in TRMM 20 dBz was the minimum detectable uh, echo for the precipitation. So this uh, ETS 20 dBz, it gives the idea about the precipitation height. 
so it is provided in pre monsoon as well as in monsoon season so if we see here it is uh, in both the season it is uh, observed that uh, uh, precipitation heights are more in the eastern india compared to the northeastern india for example this is a 99 percentile means top 1% uh, of uh, value of uh, ecotop height so over uh, eastern india we are getting up to 18 km height of uh, uh, precipitation and uh, towards the eastern side the maximum we are getting 16 and kilometer then 14 so towards the northeastern side we have lower height compared to the eastern side and uh, similarly in uh, monsoon also the eastern side is more uh, eco top height compared to the western side or uh, eastern eastern india compared to northeastern part but seasonally if we see uh, eth precipitation height is more uh, during the monsoon season compared to the uh, pre monsoon season now if we see another parameter uh, 40 dbz eco top height next 40 dbz eco top height it is again plotted for 99 percent at value means top 1% Uh, first off let me just uh, uh, spell out the significance of 40 dbz 40 dbz eco top height is a proxy for the updraft also so if dbz 40 dbz height is more uh, it provide the information it provide the uh, information that updraft is more in that particular location a particular reach so here first of all again same thing uh, eastern india is having more eco 40 dbz eco top height and uh, northeastern part eco top height 40 dbz eco height is uh, smaller compared to the eastern india and same thing in the monsoon season but here one important uh, information is that unlike uh, 20 dbz 40 dbz is more during the pre monsoon season because uh, compared to the monsoon because uh, during the pre monsoon it is this region uh, is more instable more convective compared to the monsoon here. and another important uh, uh, in, uh, plot we have provided here that is a rainfall contribution by the height spectrum of precipitating system of course here it was shown for uh, different different region but if we uh, i will take only two region here which is related to our studied region of eastern and northeastern part so if we see the upper uh, panels here ehf eastern himalayan foothill which is basically northeastern part of uh, some part of northeastern india that is given by the dash so if we see that the uh, for the dash uh, plot uh, ehf eastern the maximum value is uh, for the lower height 20 dbz that is around uh, during pre monsoon it is around 8 km during monsoon it is about uh, 8.5 km and uh, compared to this is for eastern himalaya foothill in the northeastern part if we compare it with the eastern himalaya uh, eastern india here which we have taken eastern east coast eic which is a solid line so if we see this plot so here we can see the maximum rainfall contribution is by during the pre monsoon it is by 16 km so it means uh, and during monsoon also it is around 16 km so the idea which we get it the information which we get is that over the eastern part of the northeastern part of the region the rainfall contribution is basically by the shallow Uh, precipitating system and over the eastern part 
the rainfall contribution is by the deep system. So in this region, two distinct characteristics in rainfall and uh, uh, their uh, morphological features are observed. And this is vertical profile of uh, ice effective radius and IWC during the pre-monsoon and monsoon. Uh, region A is uh, our Eastern India, region B is the Northeastern India. Very clearly we can see that uh, the ice uh, uh, effective radius and ice water content is significantly higher uh, over the Eastern India compared to the uh, uh, Northeastern India. Now, after seeing this previous uh, observation from satellite, where uh, which uh, we saw clearly that there is a very distinct feature of uh, morphological and rainfall uh, features of uh, uh, over this region. So we started, we taken up a new project that, uh, okay, so far we have seen with the satellite observation, this uh, distinct characteristic or regional variation. Now we shall study these two distinct region with the help of the ground observations also. So for this, uh, we have taken two station into account. One is in Kohima itself uh, here, and another station we have taken at the Rampur Hat, which is in the West Bengal. It is very much near to the in the vicinity of the Chota Nagpur, where it is a source of uh, thunderstorm generation. And uh, in these two stations, uh, we have installed different, different locations. So just uh, I would like to show uh, this uh, uh, outdoor sensor over Kohima. So we can see here a micro rain radar is there, then Parsival distrometer, rain gauge, and we have a electrical and lightning measurement also with the help of a EFM, electric field mill, and a lightning detector over Kohima. As well, and this is our indoor uh, data uh, acquisition system in our laboratory in the Kohima. And next, we have installed similar type of instruments, except MRR in the West Bengal, in the Rampurhat College also, in the Rampurhat. It is uh, Virbhum district. Uh, here also we have uh, Parsival distrometer, rain gauge, and electric field mean and lightning detector. This is the indoor unit of a laboratory uh, in the Rampurhat College. Now with the help of this uh, instrument, now we will see once the idea about the morphological feature from the satellite observation is clear, now we started seeing the microphysical properties of the precip precipitating system over the region. So first with the help of uh, distrometer observation, uh, we classified uh, uh, rain into different uh, uh, category uh, like stratiform, mix, and convective. And the scheme was uh, this classification scheme we used by Bringi et al. 2003 and Chen. And here, what we observed that uh, here, blue one is Kohima, uh, red one is Rampurhat. Uh, here, we observed that uh, during both uh, pre monsoon as well as in uh, monsoon season, uh, the occurrence as well as uh, rainfall occurrence. For stratiform, it is more over Kohima, stratiform rain. We can see blue is always more than uh, red one compared uh, for the stratiform. But for convective, uh, it is uh, more in the Rampurhat con compared to the Kohima. Similarly, accumulation also we get the convective rainfall is more uh, in the Rampur hut and the stratiform rain is more the Kohim. Now we have uh, plotted uh, the raindrop size distribution here for three different situations, stratiform, mix, and convective. Here, this blue color is for Kohima and uh, 
uh, red is for Rampur heart. We can see here different, uh, very distinct clustering in the shape of the raindrop size is visible here. So over that red uh, solid line is for pre-monsoon and dashed line is for monsoon season. So overall, what we observe regional variation is that during both pre-monsoon as well as monsoon, uh, for stratiform, mix, and convective, over Rampurhat region, over eastern India, larger drops are more compared to the uh, Kohima, which is part in the northeastern part. And as well as uh, seasonal also, we see that uh, over both the stations, uh, the drops are larger during the pre-monsoon season compared to the monsoon. So two uh, informations are very much clear. Again, let me repeat it. That uh, regionally, Eastern India has uh, our uh, rain precipitating systems are associated with the larger raindrops compared to the northeastern part of India. And seasonally, over both the stations, uh, precipitating system during pre monsoon season are associated with the larger drops compared to the monsoon. Now here, again, we are seeing the regional and seasonal variation of DM, mass weighted uh, diameter. Sir, uh, can you please make a little bit faster? OK, okay. Bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here also, if we see pre-monsoon and monsoon for stratiform uh, mix and convective, we can see through the box plot that median value and 75 percentile value is larger over Rampurhat compared to the uh, Kohima and during monsoon also Rampurhat is greater or larger than the monsoon. And this is another parameter that is smaller drops. It is a, in fact reverse of the DM. If DM is larger, that is reflected in terms of a smaller. So a smaller drops are median value and 75 percentile value is more over Kohima compared to the Rampurhat even both in pre-monsoon as well as monsoon season. So NW and DM, they are uh, inversely proportional here. And uh, this is the model parameter value here. We can see here that uh, mu here, just I would spend some time. If we see the pre-monsoon and uh, monsoon. So in Rampurhat, mu value is towards the lower side, which indicate uh, uh, which indicate the uh, uh, positive uh, concave uh, shape of the DST, which indicate that larger drops or uh, colossense process is dominating compared to the Kohima. Similarly, here also, that distinct difference we are able to see. This is lambda. This also one way of telling that uh, if lambda is less, drops are larger uh, over the region. So Rampurhat uh, values of lambda are in pre-monsoon as well as monsoon, both it is showing lesser. So we uh, conclude or we just a rain integral parameter also, these model parameters. And we have a JEDA relationship for, uh, for three different regions. For upper panels are for pre-monsoon and lower panels are for monsoon season. And red one is for Rampurhat, blue one is uh, uh, for Kohima. We can see very clear clusters are there for the, for the same rainfall content, the different clustering of uh, uh, JEDAR. Uh, uh, spectral uh, scatter plots are observed and they have a distinct JEDA relationship. Similarly, for DM also, we can see that different clustering is observed and uh, eventually different uh, relationship, DMR relationship is also observed. 
So vertical evolution now here with the help of uh, these were this uh, last uh, section was for the surface observation by OTT. Now here just I would like to show some results from the vertical DSD profile and what type of microphysical process it is indicating here. So this is the uh, plot of uh, ND for different different uh, type of rain, bright band, no bright band, low rain, and no bright band, high rain. So that is uh, NBBH high is indicating basically the convective rain. Bright band is a stratiform rain. So here also we can see that as uh, drops are coming towards the uh, down, so during convective time, uh, the larger drops are increasing. But during bright band, uh, the enhancement is not very significant. And uh, here we can also see lower drops are decreasing in their number density. So which may suggest or which suggests that at the expense of lower drops, which are decreasing, the larger drops we are getting more. It means collision and coalescence process is taking place. We'll, this we will see more here. This is of course uh, N, N, W. So here we can see that uh, uh, number density in the lower channels, as it is drops are coming down, number of drops in the lower drops, they are reducing very significantly in the convective system in both pre-monsoon and monsoon. And in during bright band, that uh, decrease is insignificant or marginally less. This is for DM. We can see here that uh, in especially for convective rain, as rainfall coming from down, uh, here it is uh, uh, drop size is increasing. And uh, in bright band and no bright band, that size is not as significant compared to the uh, convective in both the seasons. This one I would like to skip at the moment. So conclusion is uh, significant regional and seasonal variation in the morphological and microphysical properties of precipitating system is over the northeastern and eastern India. The region of eastern India is found to be associated with deeper and stronger precipitating system compared to the northeastern India. Seasonally, over both the region, the precipitating season, this is uh, important. The region of eastern India is found to be associated with larger drops compared to the northeastern India. Seasonally, over both the region, the precipitating systems are associated with larger drops in the pre-monsoon season compared to the monsoon season. Over the eastern region, the rainfall contribution is predominantly by deeper precipitating system, whereas over the northeastern part, the rainfall contribution is by shallow systems. Significant regional and seasonal variation in JADAR and DMR relations are found over the region paving the way for suitable relation for quantitative precipitation estimation by weather radars. And here in this section, the bright band height is found to be more during the monsoon season compared to the pre-monsoon season over Kohima. This MRR of, these are from MRR observation over Kohima. And in both the season, bright band type of rain is found to be predominantly associated with competitive breakup coalescence process dominate. In both the season, the non-bright band low and high rain are found to be predominantly associated with weaker and stronger collision coalescence process. So it means in bright band, we have competitive breakup and coalescence process, but in convective and or in no bright band situation, where there we see collision coalescence process is more dominating. 
Overall, collision coalescence process for low bright band, low and high rain are found to be stronger during the pre-monsoon season compared to the monsoon season. So acknowledgement, financial support from MHRD, Government of India, and Nagaland is thankfully acknowledged. Support from ISRO, Departments, Department of Space, Government of India is thankfully acknowledged. Thank you. And this just, I would like to say the contribution by our research scholars, those who have worked here, including Mohen, he joined here in 2002. And uh, he joined with Adhigan Kumar Sharma. They worked together for five, six years. And they have really laid the foundation for the work which we are continuing till now. Then it is supported or carried out by other research scholars also. Uh, Mohan is in ITM and one of the scholars, Devaji Datta, is in MCAMRWF. Partha Roy is uh, national PTF in NARL. Other teach, uh, research scholars are join, have joined the colleges in Assam. And uh, some four re last research scholars, they are continuing here. So I really appreciate their huge contribution for the work which is going on in this lab. Thank you, thank you so much. Now, we can yeah. Go for discussion. yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, we have in the panel, uh, Dr. S. D. Power, sir, who visited Kohima some time ago. Hello, Power, sir. Yes, yes. Yes. Welcome, sir. Yeah. Welcome, sir. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah. How are you? Uh, fine, sir. Fine. Fine. Yeah, yeah. It, it is good. Really good to be visited to your college. It, it is really nice. <laughs> To see you again here. Yeah. Yes, sir. We really were benefited by your comments during that visit, especially for our electric field mill and yeah. lighting detector. Uh, of course, that result, those results I have not presented here, uh, yes. but uh, we really appreciate and we are yeah, thankful. Yeah. Actually, this data, uh, this is really very good. Actually, if you study this lightning characteristics and your uh, this microphysical properties, because this lightning data is available with us, actually, we can provide you uh, last means from 18 to uh, 21, that three years data is available, actually, I will send you. It is really good to study this, how this electrical characteristics and microphysical properties, they are correlated. Yes, sir. Yes. So that will be great, sir. That will be great. And yeah. we really look forward uh, for this uh, work in future. Yeah, and yeah. We will be Don't very happy. Uh, that Kohima sensor was not working, but uh, still our other sensors were working. Therefore, whole northeastern lightning data we, we are having actually. Yes, uh, I will give that. Uh, I will share that data with you. If uh, any one of your student is working on that, it will be really good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Our two research scholars are working on electric field and lightning and uh, microphysics. And uh, of course, now, sir, for your kind information, Kohima LD is also working. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. It is working. now it is working. So there were some couple of issues were there regarding internet connection. But now, with the help from IITM, it has been solved. So it is a working yeah. condition, sir. Yeah. And your that paper really, I appreciate that uh, you studied electrical characteristics in northeastern and one station at eastern part. It was really good. I was one of the reviewer, and uh, I I really appreciate that work. Oh, work. thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you so much for your generous comments, sir. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, Anupam Anupam has some questions. Hello, Anupam. Yeah, please, please. Uh, my question, I think I, I put it in the chat box. So, uh, Mayan, could you please? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Anupam is asking why ice effective radii and ice water content are more during pre monsoon over the northeast region? That is the first question. Yeah. Yes. Now, actually, here um, it is more in pre monsoon, both over eastern and uh, 
uh, northeastern part, it is basically due to a strong instability or stronger updraft over this region. So we have seen through uh, ERA data that during this pre-monsoon season, updrafts are very strong compared to the monsoon season. So once the updraft is there and that is reflected by 40 dBz ecotop height also, which I just mentioned that it is a proxy for the updraft. So we see that eastern part of India and northeastern during pre-monsoon, these values are higher. So once updraft is there, that uh, it takes the hydrometers to the upper height. And uh, at that time, the ice water content, it, it uh, enhances. So if it is a updraft is weak, then uh, this uh, hydrometeors and water content, liquid water content, it will not be able to go up to the higher heights and we will not get the ice content more. So basically, strong updraft is the main reason uh, due to the strong instability during the pre-monsoon season. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, his second question is, uh, is the broadening of uh, DSD uh, not related to the rhyming process, which is related to cold stratiform rain? Of course, uh, here many hypotheses are given, but uh, for rhyming process uh, to see that spectral broadening, uh, we have not seen through uh, any uh, observation or, uh, or, or through the model. But what uh, we are hypothesizing here is that again to the updraft. So if we see what we have observed here, that there are lots of standard deviation in the updraft magnitude of the updraft is observed during the pre-monsoon. So due to that updraft also, uh, we are hypothesizing that uh, spectral broadening will be more. Then is the last question. Uh, uh, can we differentiate stratiform or convective rain during, uh, using a dizerometer? Yes, that's what uh, we have done here. We have shown also. Uh, of course, we have utilized the algorithm by Birengi et al. and Chen et al. So with that, uh, uh, if uh, just if I can go back. Uh, Here we have uh, summarized that uh, one. So here what we do, we take a time series of uh, around, uh, at a given time, we take five sample after and uh, below, before that and after that. And within that 10 data sample, we see the standard deviation. And if the standard deviation is less than 1.5 mm per hour and rainfall is uh, less than 5 mm, per hour intensity, uh, then we say it is a stratiform rain. And in this situation, if it is standard deviation is more than 1.5 mm per hour and rain intensity is more than 5 mm per hour, we say it is a convective rain. And if neither is stratiform nor we are telling it is a mixed rain. So we have uh, uh, validated with this MRR in, uh, at Kohima also, and we found it is a very encouraging result that this algorithm is really performing very well uh, with the classification of the stratiform mix and convective rain. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. It's a very yeah. nice talk. Really, we enjoy it. Thank you. Uh, Sachin, Sachin Deshpande, yeah. Yes, please. Uh, it's very interesting and nice talk. So, uh, I learned many things about the, the monsoon precipitating systems over the eastern part and the northeastern part. So, one of your main conclusions is that the, the precipitating systems over the eastern parts are more deeper and stronger compared to the northeastern parts. So, yes. uh, have you looked into the, the vertical profiles of MRR over the, both the regions since you have MRR in that, uh, at that college uh, uh, in the eastern part and in the Kohima? But that will give you the, the more precise information.
And uh, of course, uh, uh, from MRR, because of uh, this attenuation problem in convective situation, we are exactly not able to see through MRR, but uh, through TRMM, KU band radar, which I have shown that regional vari uh, variation, the reflectivity profile, we have shown it. Uh, ETS 20 dBz, eco top high 20 yeah, dBz yeah, yeah. and uh, 40 dBz. That is very clearly showing that in Eastern India it is more. But due to this limitation of attenuation in high rain during convective, uh, exactly we are not able to show with the help of MRR that, uh, uh, that difference in the pre-monsoon and monsoon season of that uh, eco top heights. That, uh, of course, it is a limitation of the MRR, which I have already mentioned in my talk. Yeah, <laughs> any comment from the panelist? Any other comments? Yeah, if if not, uh, sir, uh, thank you for the um, enlightenment um, talk. We really learned about rain DSD, the very fundamental of uh, rain drop size distribution you have discussed thoroughly. And the uh, talk will be there always in the YouTube. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, this will be available in future. So thank yeah. you, sir, for coming, and thank okay. you, the panelist. Uh, I would us. also like to thank uh, to organizers uh, to giving me this opportunity. It is my privilege to be here, and uh, I also really enjoyed the interaction. And uh, we'll be in touch with the research group of IITM. As Pawar sir has told that uh, lightning data will be available. And definitely it will be a, a new opening for us to work uh, to combining the electric measurement and rain DSD measurement. Uh, ho hopefully we look forward for a very strong collaborative work with IITM in future. Thank you, sir. Yes, sure, sure, sir. We will be very happy. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.